Hello everyone, this is Mr. Zarzak. In this tutorial, I'll focus on how to use a spring scale. Although the spring scales we'll use in class look a little bit different than what you see on the screen now, I wanted to start off by showing you this picture of a very common spring scale that I'm sure you've seen before at the supermarket. This is a hanging spring scale used for produce, so when you buy fruits or vegetables in bulk, you pay by the pound, and so it's often useful to measure how much weight of fruit or vegetable you have before making your purchase. A spring scale like this will have a basket underneath for you to put your fruits or vegetables in. The spring scales we'll use in class are much smaller, designed to be handheld, and also designed to have smaller weights hung from a hook. Another difference is the units of our spring scale. In science class we use metric units, and so when we're measuring a weight or a force, we'll use the units of newtons instead of the units of pounds. A pound is larger than a newton. In fact, one pound is equivalent to 4.45 newtons, or if you prefer to go the other direction, one newton is about 0.2 pounds. Just to give you a simple example, a person who weighs about 150 pounds would weigh approximately 667 newtons. The spring scales we'll use in class max out at about 20 newtons, so we won't be hanging any students from our spring scales anytime soon. So why do they call it a spring scale? Well, if you look closely at my diagram, right here in fact, you'll see inside there's a spring. When a weight is put on the end of the hook or someone pulls on the end of the hook, the spring stretches a certain amount. The amount the spring is stretched directly corresponds to how much force is being applied to the scale. And so just by watching how far this little tab moves down, that allows us to read the force that's pulling on the end of the scale. To correctly interpret the scale, you need to know what the markings on the scale represent. The little markings are what we call graduations. In order to read the graduations, all you need to do is count the number of graduations between two marked locations. What I mean by this is that if you take and you start at one location, so let's say we start at zero, and then we, all we do is we count the number of lines. So I count one, two, three, four, five lines. By going up by five lines, that's equivalent to two newtons of force. So now if I just write this as a ratio for two newtons of force, we have five lines. This reduces down to 0 0.4 newtons for every one line. Therefore, each line of graduation is worth 0.4 newtons. Okay, so let's try a quick example. Something's pulling on our spring scale. Maybe we've hung a weight. Maybe we've attached to the, the spring scale to something and we're pulling on it. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that we read the tool correctly. So let's zoom in for a closer look. Now, when you're reading the tool, which end of the little plunger you read matters. And so it's this little pointy end here that you want. All right, we can see here that we're at 8 newtons. And you can see that there's another line of graduation that we've passed, so that would be 8.4 newtons. But we're not quite yet at the following line, which would be 8.8 .8 newtons. So these are the limits to our precision. So following the rules for measuring with significant figures, it's in between these two values that we have to make our estimation. So again, if this is 8.4 and this is 8.8, .8, to me it looks like we're a little bit above the 8.4. So I would make the estimate that the spring scale reads... 8.5 newtons. And there we go. We've read the tool. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. This is Mr. Zarzik saying I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.